What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. I hope everyone is staying safe amidst what is going on right now. Today we're going to be doing a very basic breakdown of the reverse of our explosion in our recently uploaded Chaos short film. This is a very simple visual effects walkthrough, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Because of what is happening right now, we have decided to do a 50% off discount on all Light Architect products for Blender 3D. In the description, there is a discount code for 50% off on all of our products, including Chaos, City Builder 3D, Light Architect, and the Cable Cam Cinematic Movement Rig. And we have the link to those products in the description as well. Anyways, guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects, where we have composited all of our passes. And this is our final shot that we will be breaking down. As you can see, we have some uh, rocks flying out and then pretty much a dust pass. So um, let's go ahead and break it down layer by layer. All right, so the first thing we did was track our live action footage using the After Effects 3D camera tracker here. And then we applied all of that tracking data to everything we overlaid onto our footage. Then we added our rocks that we've created inside of Blender utilizing the Chaos add-on rock 3D scans. And uh, as you can see here, we've added a few color correction techniques to blend these rocks into the environment a little bit better. First, we added a curves effect to essentially just brighten up the shadows a bit to match them to our environment a bit more. Then we added a tint to kind of uh, blend them into our ground a little bit more. We've added a 26% tint and made it a little bit more of a uh, brown desert color. And then finally we added a dust scratches effect and this is just kind of to remove some of the noise from our render because we rendered these rocks with a pretty low amount of samples to render it faster. The next layer we added was our character rotor layer. So essentially what this is, is a layer that separates our character from the background. When we do this, now our character is integrated more into our environment because we can layer him above our rock layer. As you can see here, when we deselect it, all of these rocks go on top of him. And then when we select it again, all of the rocks that should be below him go below him. Then we added these two dust wave stock footage elements to our scene to blend our rock explosion into our environment a bit more. And then finally, we added an adjustment layer with color correction to get this final result. All right, so to create this rock explosion inside of Blender, we have used the Chaos add-on rock debris option here with an omnidirectional burst. And what we've done here is we've added a collision plane here and exploded an omnidirectional burst with our rocks on top of it. And when we do that, we get this kind of explosive result here that just blasts out rocks. Then we've created a camera here to match the perspective and angle of our live action shot and then rendered out all of the CG rocks blasting by the camera here. We've made this plane render shadows only so that we can composite all of our rocks on top of our ground plane in our live action shot as well. As some of you pointed out in the comments of our short film, yes, the rocks do slide along our ground plane a little bit, so we could have added some friction to this ground plane in our collision settings here. But regardless, we were pretty happy with the result, but we'll look into creating a little bit more realism for our next video. Anyways, before we end this video, I want to show you how you can create a debris field very easily inside of the Chaos add-on and then bake that into a cache and then render out your own debris field for compositing different effects. So let's go ahead and open up a new file here. Now let's go ahead and first just delete everything in our scene here. We'll go ahead and make sure our Cycles rendering engine is selected here. And now let's go ahead and add a ground plane that interacts with our particle debris. So we'll just go to Collision Cube here, and we'll just scale it down and place it in our scene, something like that. Now we'll go ahead and choose the frame we want to make our explosion start at, so maybe frame 20. And then we'll select our 3D cursor where we want our explosion to be. And uh, we're going to leave the Chaos Particle parameters where they are right now, just uh, for the sake of this example. But you can adjust these as well. We'll go ahead and choose the Rocks Debris field and then we'll click on Omnidirectional Burst. And now as you can see, we have some rock 3D scans ready attached to a particle system that will blast out as an Omnidirectional Burst here. And this is a pretty cool looking result, but you can also adjust the particle settings in your particle tab here. You can increase the velocity here and uh, randomize it a bit. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much how you would do this. We can maybe increase the number of particles a bit. Maybe we'll put like 450. And now we can uh, have a little bit more particles coming out here. And then maybe we could actually, under physics, we can actually decrease the drag a little bit to 0.65. And 
now our particles have a little bit less drag. These forces are also something you can play with depending on how you want your objects to interact in our scene. And uh, all of these debris fields are fairly similar, but we've tried to adapt it so that certain debris fields go out further than others like it would be in real life. Before you render out your explosion, you'd want to save your file and bake the physics of the particle simulation. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to File, Save As, and we'll just save this as uh, Particle Test. And uh, you want to make sure under the uh, animation frames here that you have the frames you want in your final render. So we'll just go ahead and put it at maybe 100, so from frame 1 to 100. Then to uh, bake your simulation, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your particle emitter is selected. Then you'll go to the particle tab here. And then under cache, you'll just go ahead and click bake. And now as you can see here, all of our uh, particle movement is baked into our blend file so we don't have to play it back every time. And if you want to render the particles for longer than 100 frames, then you would just increase this to say 200 and then you would delete the bake and then you would bake it again for 200 frames and now as you can see it goes much longer than uh, just 100 frames to render out a version of your rock explosion you would just add a camera to your scene so press shift a and then maybe add a camera view through the camera and just kind of uh, position where you would want the angle of your explosion to be. And then you'd want to go under your camera settings, under the film tab, you want to make it transparent so that your background doesn't render a sky. Then you can add some lights to your scene, maybe add a sun, depending on your environment of your live action shot or animation, you want to add some different lights. And maybe a uh, under the environment tab, you'll add a uh, sky texture. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can play around with the particle settings and the lighting, of course. There are a lot of things you can change, but this video is already getting pretty long, so I'll stop there. To render out your explosion with an alpha channel, I usually use the uh, OpenEXR file format here. So I'll go here, and then I'll choose where I want my explosion outputted in this option right here. And uh, yeah, then you can essentially just output your rock or any of your debris explosions as an animation, and uh, then composite it into your animation or live action shot. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you enjoy the Chaos add-on as well. As I said in the beginning of the video, we have a 50% off sale on all of our Light Architect products on Blender Market. So check those out if you want in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.